Welcome to the UCL Pokemon Draft League. This is Alex Grimes II, the king himself. And we'll be doing the first round of the UCL playoffs. No commercials. Without further ado, let's go. The first battle will be between the season 12 champion, Bethlehem Braviaries, and the last seed, ACAB. All comps are bad. All comps are bad will be on the player's side while Bethlehem Braviaries will be on the opponent's side. Reflect from the Zatu. The Rotom is going to hit super effectively with the Volt Switch. Get in the Mega Charizard X. Mega Charizard X is just going to blow right through the Reflect. That's one Pokemon down. Six to five now. Lander Stadium versus the Snorlax. Snorlax is going to go for a curse behind this Reflect. Going to get its attack power back to zero. Registeel versus the Snorlax. The Body Slam is going to do no damage to the Registeel. Registeel sitting at 99%. That Snorlax is going to be out of there. Here comes the Iron Defense from the Lucario. Lucario is going to go for an Endure and get knocked down to 1%. The uh, Weakness Policy is going to kick in, thinking that he was going to be able to take out the Registeel at that point. Uh, he's going to go for two vacuum waves onto the Lander Asterian, but that's not going to do enough for that carry potential on the Lucario. Lucario was down. It is now six versus uh, four now. Rapid spin onto the Ready Steel, but that's going to do nothing again. Ready Steel is just sitting in front of this team. Another iron defense. Urshifu goes behind a sub, but Ready Steel destroys it with a body press. Immediately, Urshifu is going to get out of there. Another body press onto the Snorlax, takes out the Snorlax. It is now six versus three. The ACAB all comps are bad or just falling to the wayside. Comfy is gonna come in, but the Steel type will easily resist a draining kiss. That's going to be it for that uh, Comfy. The Heavy Slam will just destroy it. Uh, now here's the Urshifu. Urshifu, where is the fighting move? It's going to fall down to another body press on Ready Steel. Ready Steel is going in. And that's going to be it. The body slam will destroy the final Pokemon on ACAP side. The winner is Bethlehem Braviaries, and he will be moving to the next round. Yes, Registeel did very good this game. 481% damage to its enemies. It is a tier 4 Pokemon in this season of the UCL, meaning that the Bethlehem Braviaries are using it to extreme potential for what it was considered. Registeel with its iron defense and the body press plus Heavy Slam just tore through the ACAB side when he was probably looking at other Pokemon to carry. We now have here with us right now, Pat Flynn, the leader of the Bethlehem Braviaries, to give his opinion on how the match went. Going into this game, I knew Spencer was suffering from COVID and was actually like pretty much at the height of how bad it was when we were to play. So I just mostly just felt bad that he was even still putting an effort to play the game. Um, but even disregarding that, my track record is usually much better than Spencer's. Um, so going into the match, I felt pretty confident. He's usually a pretty consistent player, doesn't do anything too wacky. So I didn't feel uh, too pressured going into this game. Luckily, Spencer did recover from his stint with COVID and he will be returning in season 14. For now, we'll be moving on to the next battle. The next battle will be between the Canapolis Intimidators versus the king, the greatest, the best of all time, the future winner of the season 13 UCL. It's Alex Grimes II, the king himself, leading the UCL Finibust. Let's go. Era. The king's battle music has been played. He demands the player side. Kadeem. The Electros will get Volt switched on by the Tapu Koko. It's going to come into a Kiram who will get knocked off. The no more choice specs for that Kiram. The damage has been neutralized. Very smart by the King. He's going to paralyze the 
Kiram with the Thunder Wave, and Kadeen will then get out of there with a Volt Switch, switching into the Darmanitan, who will then go for a Flare Blitz and take out the first Pokemon of this match. Blastoise will come in, that's the Mega in front of this Suicune here, King Suicune. Flip turn will get Blastoise out of there into the Tapu Koko, that's going to uh, get the force the Suicune to protect while it will stop the Volt Switch. Here is the Clefable now, it's going to get Volt Switched on into the Blastoise again. Clefable versus Blastoise, hopefully the Clefable, yes, very tanky on the special defensive side. We'll get a Toxic off in front of that Water Pulse, going to get Flip turned on. Hopefully we'll be able to heal up with the Soft Boil. Cobalion in, yes, he does get the Soft Boil at all. Clefable, uh, it's going to be a double switch. King versus the Black Stoys Mega. Now Water versus Water is going to go for a protect. The flip turn is going to be scouted out. He wants to get out of there. The flip turn then gets through off of a second protect. Maybe that was a mistake. Here is the Tapu Koko again. It's definitely going to scare out. No, the King decides to stay in. Going to get a Toxic off onto the Tapu Koko. But at what cost? Tapu Koko is going to be able to... Take down the Suicune to 16%. Clefable's back in now. Clefable, we already saw, is strong on the special defensive side. It's going to get down to 72% HP and then hit a Moonblast onto the switching in Donphan. We're going to switch back into the Suicune. Suicune is going to get some Stealth Rocks uh, placed on by Donphan. Donphan's out of there again. Suicune's going to try to keep healing up with its leftovers. Hit a Scald onto the Blastoise doing a little bit of chip damage. The Suicune is now going to go for a Protect, but the Tapu Koko was switching in on that turn. That was a Waste Protect, and down goes the Suicune. Tapu Koko getting a very crucial hit. That's definitely going to hurt the King's mental. It did hurt my mental during that game. Here is the Kadeen. The uh, Electros is going to go for a Volt Switch. There's now st uh, Stealth Rocks that are getting big damage onto the Pokemon on this side. He's going to go for an Earthquake. Will he be able to kill the Mega Blasters? It doesn't. He gets taken down to 2%. And the Darmanitan is now do now gone. That Darmanitan was the big damage of the Season 13 Finibus team. Here is the Electros versus the Cobalion now. But Electros is getting very low now. He doesn't have a reliable healing potential. He goes for a knockoff, but that hits makes the Cobalion get justified 2.5 times attack what is he is this oh no the Cobalion is faster than the Mega Latios he will get an iron head off onto the Mega Latios and then the Mega Latios will kill it but then get taken down by the Tapu Koko there's only two Pokemon left the Jirachi which has been holding in the back most likely going to be happy hour and the Clefable who has been holding out holding on to the Finibust season 13 playoffs chance it's fighting as hard as it can it's going to be able to take out the Tapu Koko however the Don Fan and the Zarude are still here Don Fan is going to outspeed the Clefable it's all down to Jirachi Jirachi is going to go for the Z celebrate Z happy hour excuse me Z happy hour Omni boosted the Earthquake does not kill. This is the chance that UCL Finibus needs. Ice Shards is not going to be enough. Hit the stored power will take it out. It's all down to Zarude. Zarude hits first. Zarude hits first. Zarude hits first. Jirachi is down. The winner is Kanapolis Intimidator. Zarude has been a thorn in the Finibus side for a very long time has taken it out in two separate playoffs seasons. It was able to outspeed the Happy Hour Jirachi with its Choice Scarf and with its additional Darkest Lariat. It was the perfect counter for the Jirachi's defense boost, even if Jirachi had more HP. It would have been able to cut through the defense boosts of the Happy Hour Jirachi plus being strong against Megalodios and the King's Chosen Fabled Suicune. That makes Zarude the perfect counter against this year's UCL Finibust. We now have the TEC's Ace Trainer Orange standing by to give his opinion on how the match went.
The game between Finneburst and the Kamapuas Intimidators was one of rapid back and forth momentum. What seemed like a simple ice beam play turned into issues rather quickly for, for the Finneburst as it would provide openings for the Intimidators' top Coco. The waters of Suikun and Blastoise would attempt to cancel each other out, and Jirachi would attempt a Z Happy Hour Sweep, only to be foiled by the Intimidators' Choice Scarf Gur Azuru. Better luck next time, guys. Did you just call my team name Finna Burst? I was going to promote the League Coliseum draft page where the TEC exists, but instead, I'm Finna Burst some caps in your ass from fucking up my team name. Get this disgusting piece of filth out of my video before I bust a cat in his ass. Next battle. The next battle will be between the original creator of the UCL, Philadelphia Furos, versus the playoffs hopeful, Sam Time. Philadelphia Furos will be on the player's side while Sam Time will be on the opponent's side. The Hydro Pump will do big damage onto the Steelix. However, Steelix gets big damage in return. The Hydro Pump will finally kill that Steelix on the second turn, making the Greninja get its battle bond form. Pylo Swine will scare out the Greninja. The Ice Shards definitely would have killed it. The Chansey will come in, get a seismic top toss onto the Manaphy. Manaphy goes for a substitute while Chansey is going to switch, slow switch out of there into the Raikou. Raikou goes for a Calm Mind while the Manaphy goes for a Surf. That Surf's not going to do enough damage. The Thunderbolt will take out the sub. Oh, that was a big mistake. That Tail Glow on the broken sub will force the Manaphy to get out of there. Pile of Swines in. Here comes the Z all out. Pumble will destroy the pile of swine. That's all the ground types gone against this calm minded Raikou. The Crabominable will be able to take out the Raikou, stopping that killing machine. Here's the Sock now versus this Manaphy. Manaphy was not the one that wanted to come in. It's going to take big damage. A second close combat will take out the Manaphy. Manaphy was a big part of the Sam Time team for a very long time. Well, let's see if he'll be able to come out on top without it. Here's the Gorgeist versus the uh, Mega Gallade. Gorgeist is going to get a burn onto the Mega Galley. Mega Galley goes for a Trick Room. Gorgeist comes in, power rips the Crabominable, taking it out. This is a very useful Pokemon here. It's going to be able to get a burn off and take out another threat potential. Okay, now the foul play will do damage onto the Mega Galley. Mega Galley tries to get a little bit of damage off, but the Synthesis will be able to keep the Gorgeist healthy. Gorgeist is tanking it up. It only takes 15% off of that Zen head, but and takes out the Mega Gallade. Now here is the Dragon Knight. It's going to go for a Dragon Dance, but get burned. The Lumberry will be used. Another Dragon Dance, trying to get as many Dragon Dances off as possible, trying to win the game, but that's, he should be very careful. Goes for a third Dragon Dance, but the foul play will do damage based on his attack power. That's going to be it. That Gorgeist will win the game for Philadelphia Feroes. Gorgeist, a tier 4 Pokemon. Not expected to do that much damage in a game on any given particular time. However, in this game, it hit a big 242% damage and was able to mitigate as much damage as possible through the use of its Synthesis and its Will-O-Wisp. It was able to take out multiple Pokemon. This was a very good pick into the Sam Time team. After 31 weeks of regular play, during playoffs, sometimes you need to dig deep within your roster to find the correct counter for your opponent. And the Philadelphia Feroes was able to do so. For now, we will be moving on to the next battle. He was vouched for by the entire UCL. It's the Chico Chestnuts, the herald to the TEC. He's going to try to prove his worth against the opponent, West Korean Wurmples. West Korean Wurmples will be on the player's side, while Chico Chestnuts will be on the opponent's side, Mianchao versus the Tapu Fini. The Tapu Fini is going to get out of there in favor 
of the Rodom Heat, but a U-turn comes out. Volt Switch onto the Surf Fetch on, from the Rodom Heat back into Tapu Fini. It's going to resist a knockoff, but it's going to knock off Tapu Fini's item, taking out some of its effectiveness. The Gengar comes in, resists a Moon Blast there, and Scrafty will come in in return. Gengar goes for a substitute. The Dazzling Gleam, good tech from the Gengar, will be able to do big damage onto the Scrafty. Scrafty is down. The Garchomp will come in and clean up the Gengar, probably Scarfed much faster than the Gengar at its normal speed. The Gligar will cancel out that Scarfed Garchomp. It's Hapu Fini now versus the Gligar. They're trading damage. The Ice Beam, the Moonblast first took down Gligar to kill range and then the Ice Beam secured it before the Gligar could move. It's Mianxiao versus the regular, the, excuse me, Mega Mawile here. It's gonna get U-turned on. The Mianxiao's out of there into the Incineroar who drops the Mega Mawile's attack power. Definitely crucial for against that Pokemon for Chico Chestnut's parting shot onto the switching in Rodom. Here is the Surfetch. Surfetch is gonna get Will-O-Wisp by the Rodom. That's going to take away a lot of its effectiveness. The Overheat will miss the Surfetch and the Surfetch will be able to then take out the Rodom Heat with a final close combat. But you have to be happy with that Will-O-Wisp onto such a damaging Pokemon. The Moonblast will take out the Surfetch in return. Mianxiao comes in and finishes off the Tapu Fini. They're dropping like flies. It's three versus three here now. Anybody can win the game. Dual Wing Beat will not do enough damage onto the uh, Incineroar, who goes for another party shot. Back into the Mianxiao. Scyther versus Mianxiao. The Mianxiao outspeeds the Scyther and takes it out with a Stone Edge. It's only two Pokemon left on the Chico Chestnut side, but here comes Garchomp. Scarf is going to outrage. There's no resist left. A uh, hidden power ice. It doesn't take out the Garchomp. Garchomp gets another attack off, takes out the Swellow. All that's left is the Incineroar. Incineroar is going to be able to survive and kill the Garchomp, but it's really low here. Oh, this is definitely it. The suckers, the sucker punch will be able to take out the Incineroar. That's it. The winner will be the Chico Chestnuts, and he will move forward to round two. The game plan was clear. The Chico Chestnuts whittled down and took out as many opponents as possible and then brought in their carries, Garchomp and Mega Mawile. Garchomp doing the most out of the team. We see the Garchomp come in on its second appearance and devastate the remaining opponents with its Choice Scarf Outrage. It will be able to preserve the HP of Mega Mawile just in case while also surviving a hidden power ice and doing a devastating 257% HP damage to the enemy. We have Draco Vish Gaming's Scorpion standing by to give his opinion on how this match played out. Thanks, Alex. Now, I think the West Korean Wurmples did a very good job at utilizing their two fighting types, being Mianxiao and Surfetch in this matchup. A matchup where fighting types don't seem to do that good when you got a Tapu Fini, you got a Scyther, you have a Mawile, many things in the opposing team that's very going to do a very good job at stopping fighting types. Soon, with the right coverage, with the right playing, everything was able to fall, and truly as the resist fell, the fighting types tore apart the team. And then when it came down to whether it being Scarf Chomp, whether it being not enough speed on Mianxiao to outspeed the Garchomp, that was the unfortunate play that came down to the end, because that's what ended up losing the game at that moment when you're unable to defeat the Garchomp. I think, that the, I think that the hidden power not killing the guard chomp was also pretty upsetting. If that was hidden power or ice, which we're mostly going to speculate that it was hidden power ice. So I'm going to give a big congratulations to Chico Chestnuts. And they did very good in this match. So I'm very excited to see how they're going to do their next match and how they'll continue to do for the rest of the season. You can follow Scorpion and Dracovish Gaming with the YouTube provided on screen. Hopefully, next time he comes on to the UCL's videos, he doesn't fuck up the team name. For now, we're going to move on. We're halfway through. The next battle 
will be between the original UCL champions, why not, why not, and the season seven champions, Soliana Alteria. The Soliana Alteria will be on the player's side. We'll hit a vault switch onto the Victini and the Why Not Why Not on the opponent's side. Wailord comes in, is going to eat a berry and save itself from that electric move. Then protect itself. It's going to switch out. It's trying to see if the Victini is choiced or not. But it took some big damage on two Pokemon already just to make that assumption. Here's the Zapdos Galar versus the Silvalli Electric. Silvalli Electric is going to get a Tailwind off and then you turn in front of the Umbreon. Here is the Fortress now. Fortress is going to get some Stealth Rocks down. He's trying to keep the momentum going on his team. Here's the Neolego versus the Houndoom Mega. Mega Houndoom's gonna get out of there. Was scared out by that rock type. Did not want to get uh, any damage. However, the Whale Lord will be sent in to be sacrificed. Now the Nihilego is going to have a 1.5 times special attack. He's going to try to knock down this uh, this Kovo Knight. Corvo Knight before it's going to heal up. It's not going to be able to get it down to 6% and the Roost will bring it back to 62% after leftovers. Nihilego is going to get out of there get back into the Silvalli Electric. A good counter for this Corvo Knight. Corvo Knight is going to take a multi-attack and get really uh, damaged right there. It's going to get out of there with the U-turn. Here is the Thunderous Incarnate. The Silvalli is going to go for a Tailwind again. And here's the second multi-attack. Corval Knight is now down. Momentum is being maintained. The U-turn will go back, get the Silvalli out of there, back into the fortress. He just wants to sit his passive tank in front of the opposing passive tank and let's let them just fight it out themselves without taking too much damage. He's going to get his Stealth Rocks back down there's nothing that the umbreon can do other than wish pass in front of this fortress he's going to get toxic he's gonna the synchronize will be immune by the steel type fortress that's a very good uh strategy here just keep trying to whittle down this umbreon uh now here comes the mega houndoom but he's gonna uh realize that the switch was coming and switch back in to the Nihilego, who then scares out the Mega Houndoom again. The Thunderous Incarnate is going to be sacrificed in front of the Nihilego. Zapdos Galar will be negated by the Fortress. Fortress is getting kind of low. However, it's going to Vault Switch back out in front of the Umbreon. Victini is now back in. Victini is going to U-turn, do big damage onto the Umbreon. Now, finally, the Nihilego is back in again. Foul Play will do nothing against this heavy special attack Pokemon. Here is the Zapdos Galar. Zapdos Galar is finally going to be able to kill the Nihilego after much, uh, a lot of pressure being put down by that Pokemon. Stopping Tantrum will do nothing towards the, towards the Tapu Fini, but the damage is going to be set for the, that team. Tapu Fini is going to die for the Mega Houndoom, but it might be too late. The close combat after the Unburden from the Hitmonlee will take out the final Pokemon. The winner is going to be Why Not? Why Not? And they will move to the second round. You see it a lot with the Beast Boost Pokemon. They may not be able to get their Beast Boost off every game, but the threat of them alone is enough to get big damage onto the opposing Pokemon. As you see, the Mega Houndoom could not do anything against the Nihilego as the Nihilego was able to continuously scare it out and do big damage on opposing Pokemon. First, the Whale Lord fell, and then the Thunderous Incarnate fell, and the Zapdos Galar took big damage as well as the Nihilego scared out the, the Mega Houndoom on multiple occasions and then reaped the rewards. Two champions entered the last battle. Only one made it out. They will have to face the winner of the North Korean Nose Pass versus Jamie Trainers, Bulky Boy. North Korean Nose Pass will be on the player side while Jamie Trainers Bulky Boys will be on the opponent's side. Toxic gets thrown down onto the Cordilli while the Cordilli 
gets some stealth rocks down. Pangoro in, going to resist the rock slide that was aimed for Volcanion. The Cordelli is going to get out of there. Togekiss in now, going to get knocked off. No more damage mitigating berry for this Togekiss. Togus is going to go for a heal bell. Going to be able to stop the poison on the Cradilly. It is Porygon 2 versus the Volcanion here. Toxic onto the Porygon 2. It's going to be ticked down just a little bit. Volcanion goes for a substitute while Porygon 2 goes for a teleport. Cradilly back in in front of the Volcanion. We've seen this before. The Toxic will get put back onto Cradilly while the Rock Side will get rid of the substitute. The Volcanion goes for another substitute while the Cradilly goes for a lead seed. However, the substitute will prevent the lead seed from happening. Earth Power will do very small damage onto the Cradilly. The Cradilly is losing uh, HP, but not at the same rate as Volcanion is. Volcanion is going to go for another substitute while I get a business opportunity from Indeed. The city of Dallas has an opportunity for me? No, it doesn't. They're just going to say that I'm not viable for the job and they looked at other applicants. The Toxic gets put on to the Togekiss, but Togekiss will be able to heal bell the entire team now. The Volcanion expected the Togekiss to either go for a roost or to get out of there, it's going to miss. The Toxic gets put back down after the roost uh, from Togekiss. Now Tokis needs to get out of there, back into the Cradilly. Yet again, it's going to predict that switch and get a Toxic onto the Cradilly again. Now is the Earth Power trying to whittle down this Cradilly just brick by brick. The Volcanion is almost back up to full after the Leftovers kept healing it behind the Substitute with it, which did not break. The Rock Slide will now uh, break the Sub again, but the Volcanion has the Cradilly's number it's just going to be a trade of HP as the Cradilly eventually falls to this Toxic. The Cradilly just wanted to get a reset in momentum and stop the sub from going on. It's going to be able to stop the Volcanion from getting a sub. The Mega Absol comes, comes in, takes really big damage down to 8%, but is able to take out the Volcanion. Now, the Mega Absol is going to get out of there. Mega Caesar in now going for a bullet punch trying to take out the Absol, but the Salazzle comes in and protects its partner. Flamethrower from the Salazzle onto the Dragapult. That's not what it wanted. Now the Porygon 2 comes in, traces the Infiltrator. Dragapult is going to U-turn back into the Mega Caesar. Mega Caesar goes for a sub. However, the sub is going to be negated by the Infiltrator that Porygon 2 had traced. Turn 27, and the game is still going strong. Five versus five. We have here a Porygon 2 with Infiltrator breaking through the sub on the Mega Caesar. The Mega Caesar is going to roost up to 100%, but the Foul Play will keep trying to do damage. Foul Play will go again. He's gonna mess up a move there, uh, but that's not really gonna matter because the substitute's still going to maintain in case the Porygon 2 switches out. However, the Caesar is going to roost back up. Porygon 2 is just going to keep on trying to foul play and do some more damage. Porygon 2 is down under half percent health. This is a time. There's a turn to recover here. It's going. They're both going to recover. Porygon 2 needs to try to do something else. They're just attacking each other without doing big damage. Ice beams are coming out now onto the steel type. He's trying to get a freeze. Most likely it's not going to work this turn. That's 20% in here. This one should do some more. No, it's going to be a foul play. They're just trading damage now. This game is going on and on. The game state is not progressing. We're going to either have to try to do something damage, uh, do some more damage, try to do something different, or try to change the game state in some way. Oh, there's going to be something. The freeze happens onto the Mega Scizor. And the Porygon 2 will be able to get some damage off. Will the, the Caesar is going to be able to thaw out just in the nick of time and be able to roost up and save itself. The Porygon 2 for some reason did not go for a kill and instead goes for a heal on that turn and will save the Caesar from uh, being damaged too much. 
they're back up to nearly full health again and now they're trying to whittle each other down yet again with bullet punches and with ice beams turn 50 here we're still at 10 pokemon in total five versus five the battle still going it's getting kind of boring for me even though my voice sounds like i'm fully engaged i am crumbling it wouldn't be so bad if the pokemon that got the trace ability actually did damage but instead we're watching two tanky pokemon stall each other out when one is clearly sitting behind a substitute i am now going to begin loading my gun in case this game goes to 100 turns it might go to 100 turns but at that 100 turn i'll see you on the other side boys because i'm not watching one more turn after that it is at this point where i have run out of material 60 turns in and i am pissed stall players i hate them we should have stopped jamie when he had the chance now we have to watch this bullshit as this Trace Porygon 2 is getting stalled out. Oh, finally, they're both going to switch on the same turn, probably on call together, the bastards, and switch out into the Roserade versus the Salazzle. They're both gonna get big damage off. The Roserade will lose in the end to the Salazzle. Roserade is down, it is now four versus five. But now the Caesar is going to come in and kill the Salazzle. Now it's going to be four versus four. Latios versus the Primarina. But the Primarina is going to scare out the Latia, Latias. Excuse me. It's going to be a Latias, not a Latios. I've had problems in the, in the past with telling the two Pokemon apart. Latias and the Primarina do, dam, do damage. The Primarina is now just hammering away at Jamie Trainer's bulky boys. Togekiss is getting low. They're going to trade damage. Togekiss will finally, with a crit, be able to kill the Primarina. It's four versus three in favor of Jamie Trainer's bulky boys. But Dragapult comes in and gets a return kill with the U-turn. Pangoro in now versus the Latias. Latias hits a Draco Meteor taking out the Pangoro. Now, finally, at turn 37, they decided that they both wanted to do damage. Now, the Mega Caesar versus the Porygon 2. Why did you not Swords Dance earlier? That is very uh, questionable. It wouldn't have been able to take out the Porygon 2. He's going to be able to get big damage on the Latias. Did not kill the Latias. The Latias were able to get a Draco Meteor taking out the taking out the Caesar and the Latias is scarfed will take out the Dragapult. That's it. 72 turns in. Jamie Trainers, bulky boys, will be the victor and will move on to the next round. Jamie Trainer will be nothing without the bulky boy support guiding him to victory. The victory will be on the back this game of Porygon 2, who came in into an infiltrator traced it and then was able to tango with the mega caesar as the mega caesar could not swords dance because of the foul play would clearly would have taken it out on the next turn in his first playoffs in the ucl career jamie trainers bulky boys will be moving on to the next round for us we will be moving on to the next battle. The next battle will be between the Pittsburgh Celestila and Commissioner Christian Sand Kirams. The Christian Sand Kirams will be on the player side, while Pittsburgh Celestila will be on the opponent's side. The Venusaur is going to be scared out by the Crobat into the Mudsdale who gets a stamina boost on the attack on the Brave Bird. Uh, Gliscor is going to come in, miss its Toxic. Now the Rock Sides will start getting uh, knocked down, but it's not going to be that much damage against this physically uh, defensive Gliscor. Mega Venusaur is going to come back in. The Melmetal will be put in in its place. Lead Seed will come down onto the Melmetal. Sleep Powder is going to miss. That means the Melmetal is going to be able to attack. Boom! Double Iron Bash 
will 100 to 0 that Mega Venusaur. That's going to be a big loss this early in the game. Magma Storm from the Heatran will do big damage onto the Glass Core, but it's not going to be enough. Magma Storm will miss again. Another, another miss, which crucially is going to put Christian Sankirums in an easily losable position. The Nine Tails Alola will come in and scare out the Gliscor. Mel Metal is back in now. Nine Tails Alola will not be able to stay in. Mel Metal is going to get another free hit. The Stamina will come in, but it won't be enough. The Mudsdale is now down. It is six to three. Very unfortunate for the Christian Sankirum. Uh, the Arctazolt is going to come in, but it's not going to be enough. The, all it needs is one tap. That Double Iron Bash is very strong. From this Mel Metal will take out the Arc Dissolve. Now all that's left is a Nine Tails Alola and the Ambipom. And you have to ask, how are these two going to be able to take out a Mel Metal? It's going to get Mel Metal out of there for the Alolan Muck to preserve a 6-0 in the playoffs. Um, the Ambipom is going to get out of there. Here is the Nine Tails Alola. It's going to go for a Moon Blast, do some damage onto the Mammal Swine, but it's not going to be enough. Uh, Nine Tails Alola will get down the Mammal Swine to 13% and then get killed off by the Earthquake. Very unfortunate for the Christian Sign Kiram's team. Fake Out will take out the Mammal Swine now. All that's left is a Toxic Ambipom, and Ambipom is going to go for the Troll Dynamax. He knows it's over. Max Darkness will not kill the Mel Metal, and a final Double Iron Bash will end the game. The winner of this match will be the Pittsburgh Celesteela. With a lot of luck and a lot of damage, Mel Metal will have led his team to victory, doing huge damage on to the enemies. 227% damage on to the enemy team. Mel Metal was able to come in multiple times and take out big Pokemon such as Arctazol, Mega Venusaur, and more. The Pittsburgh Celesteela will be moving on to the next round, and we will be moving on to the final battle of round one. Runner-up from season 12, the Buffalo Sableye will try to win against the six-time champion, Kalamazoo Alakazam. The Buffalo Sableye will be on the player's side while the Kalamazoo Alakazam will be on the opponent's side. You turn from the Noivern on to the Terrakion Tangrowth in now. Stealth Rocks gets placed down in front of the Tangrowth. Tangrowth gets a Toxic onto the Hydreigon trying to slowly cripple this Dragon type. It's going to be able to frisk the Choice Specs. You turn on to the Noivern who takes some Stealth Rocks chip. The utility from Noivern is going to be able to get rid of the Stealth Rocks. Toxic will miss onto the Noivern, and the Flamethrower will be able to take out the Substitute. You turn on to the uh, Tornadus Incarnate. Air Slash will do big damage onto the uh, Inteleon. Inteleon's going to be able to get an Ice Beam off onto the Tornadus Incarnate uh, Substitute. Tornadus Incarnate needs to get out of there for the Slowbro. Slowbro is going to double switch Jolteon versus Terrakion now. Another switch critical hit onto the Terrakion with the Volt Switch. Here comes Kartana. Kartana is going to take a, a little bit of damage from the Earthquake from the Terrakion, but Kartana, uh, the Terrakion needs to get out of there. Kartana is going to be scared out by this Tornadus. Tornadus is going to go for an Air Slash, but the Tyranitar will be able to stop that from doing anything. Terrakion has Prankster, so that's not going to work. That's a dark type Pokemon right there for the Tyranitar. Toxic will be useless. Celesteela will come in now and be uh, sitting in front of this Tyranitar. The Stone Edge will destroy the Celesteela. That's going to be very unfortunate for this team. The Draco Meteor after the Stone Edge miss will secure the kill, stopping the Tarvanitar from doing any more damage. Hydreigon's going to get out of there. Tornadus Incarnate is going to come back in and die to a U-turn from the Inteleon. That, this chip damage is doing a lot. The Leaf Blade will take out the Terrakion. That's a Beast Boost. 
Cartana now. Who's going to be able to stop it? Is it? Uh, it's not choice. So the Sacred Sword will take out the Hydreigon. This is a times two uh, attack. Cartana, there's nobody left to be able to resist. That slow bro is gone from this world. It's over. This Diggsby is not going to be able to continue on. That Cartana had the snowball rolling and that was going to be it. There was no way the Buffalo Sable I would have recovered from that. The winner is going to be Kalamazoo Alakazam on the back of its Cartana. Another Ultra Beast is going to be able to come victorious, bring victory for its team. This time, Cartana, like the Nihilego, is going to continuously threaten out opponents during the game. And then finally, it will have its time to shine at the end of the game, get its first Beast Boost off, and be able to take out the only other Pokemon that had a chance of stopping it. After that, it was going to be a cakewalk as Cartana rips through the rest of the team. Finishing the game with 266% damage to enemies. Bethlehem Braviaries, Canapolis Intimidators, Philadelphia Feroes, Chico Chestnut, Why Not, Why Not, Jamie Trainers, Bulky Boys, Pittsburgh Celestila, and Kalamazoo Alkazam. These are the remaining Pokemon teams. This is Alex Grimes, the second the king himself thank you for watching remember there is a giveaway at 100 subscribers see you next time